Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So stressful. <laughs> and the world's on fire. Good God. I can't look at this, guys. Like, my strategy is... You buy it, and you hope that you gotta get spot. Yeah, but we all think you're crazy. You don't fight this. No way. The markets are freaking out, and you don't think that anything is wrong? Go back tomorrow, and I'll lose it all. Should be fun. Good morning, everybody. It is the 7th of July. Yes, it is the 7th. Look, I remembered that time. Usually, I don't remember. Anyways... Uh, we kind of got, uh, I think, a little bit of a reversal going on here. So uh, yesterday, why don't we come over here? By the way, sorry, I didn't have the uh, video going so you guys could get in here, but I think we're good. All right. Um, yesterday, remember our setup was, well, I didn't trade it yesterday, um, but I, it doesn't look like things really went through the way that I thought that they would. So we, again, starting over the weekend, we had a pretty good uh, move up in the overnight. Um, and I remember saying, you know, the, the bear case at the moment just doesn't look very good. But that we were looking to see something like 3189. So um, we made that attempt several times, but didn't really get there. And um, ultimately, though, we closed higher on the day. Um, but... It, then we tried to move to my target and we came short again and now overnight we're a little bit lower i'm seeing a lot of news about china a lot of news about china on zero hedge they're really i don't know i think the zero hedge may just be getting me in the like you know triggered overly excited about things i mean that's what they tend to do but it really feels like that there is something big coming over in china and that like the whole Trade war thing is like coming on again. Um, and this time for real. Um, that sure seems to be what it, it seems like China is doing. Um, really, they're not even calling it a trade war anymore. They're calling it the Cold War too. So that's kind of where we're at now today. Well, let's see here. First of all, do we have? Ah, yes, we are. Okay, so it looks like we've resolved all of the issues we were having with a jigsaw of journalytics. So I think we can come over here and do this. Um, and that also should mean we get our economic. Yes, cool. Okay, so I see we got a red book today. But um, I think the big thing is that we got some auctions this week, right? Three year no auction today. 10 year tomorrow. Not a ton of, of huge numbers today. Let's see here. We got the IBD tip, economic optimism, and Jolt's job openings. Okay, so this is interesting. So it's not a no news Tuesday, but it's a light news Tuesday. But we've had a, a fairly significant turn lower overnight. Uh, let's also go back to the charts. We need to check here um, the treasuries. You can see that the treasuries are higher off yesterday. They they made a, a pretty good push lower, but snapped back pretty hard. And and since we have treasury auctions this week, we might we could drift a little bit higher, especially if the equities decide that they're going to be like full-on risk off and hey we've got plenty of room up of us to go what about in the 30 year mm, not so much the temp five year by the way was really pushing it well, let's check some other assets oil still kind of well maybe has turned as well still kind of in the 40 range oh there's my stomach do you hear that Ooh. Gold, gold, uh, doing a little bit of a plateau sort of a thing there. I guess, I guess you could call that a BART. Um, put this through the footprint. What about the 
currencies. Okay, so I can see that the dollar it touched 97 and bounced right off of it. Um, gold going down, 6J going down. 6J pretty much retracing all of yesterday's move and even going a little bit lower. Euro's still relatively strong, though. I, I continue to see this theme that, that people are overweighting Europe. Oops, let me just, uh, my data feed just refreshed there, I think. <laughs> okay, let's see here. What do we got going? Hmm. So I'm I'm just kind of thinking through what might we see today. Oh, unable to connect to chat. I need to refresh that. Huh? Cool. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I think that in the bonds, I'm. I would have to be favoring longs, and I think that playing the bonds makes more sense to me than the equities do today. But um, I'm also kind of seeing things set up uh, to be relatively mild day. There. They did move okay overnight in the treasuries, but the treasuries just look a little, little constrained still. And I'm not sure if what I'm seeing over here in the equities is really a big deal or not. One point two million bail for man who struck protesters blocking a highway. Wow, oh, they actually did go and get this guy. White House Trade Advisor Navarro, U.S. has not seen hospital COVID-19 demands that it cannot meet. Mm. Uh, Tesla. Elon Musk ends up making over $50 million from his SEC settlement. The CEO presumably didn't want Tesla to have to pay for his issue with the SEC, and while he couldn't directly pay for Tesla's part of the fine, he decided to buy $20 million worth of shares from Tesla that way. He sort of indirectly ended up paying for Tesla's fine, though he also ended up with 71,000 additional shares in the process. 
Oh, but then the stock price went up, and so overall he ended up making money. That's that's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Okay, so we just got a little bit of a down move there. Melbourne enters six-week lockdown as COVID-19 cases surge. Iran sees record daily deaths. Really? In Iran? Because Iran was one of the first places to get hit, and I, I would think would be on the downside by now. But they're saying that Iran is actually doing really poorly right now, huh? Hmm. Oh, I dropped a few network frames. Let me see what's up with that. <clears throat> Yeah, guys, don't don't block highways, don't block roads. It's so dumb. It's just basically asking to be murdered. Hmm. Uzi Knesset says a lot of people out there asking for that these days, lol. Right. I'm 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 super disappointed in how the media has memory hold the incident here in Utah where a man was literally shot. Um oh my gosh, you know, a, a, a motorist was literally shot. But I have noticed that since then there has been a little bit of a change seems to me like the Democrats are kind of backing off on the, the like, never-ending protest sort of a thing. You know, they've moved on from that stage. I don't know. We'll see how things go going forward. Uzi Knesset says, don't worry, they memory hold the black man gunned down in NYC who had the audacity to hold his daughter's hand while crossing the street too. Oh, I had never heard about that one. I don't think I know what you're talking about. There was a black man, he was holding his daughter's hand while crossing the street and they shot him? My. That's crazy. So I'm hearing a lot, I'm seeing a lot of market chatter about Binance today. Oh, you know what? I never posted Uzi my Knesset Binance. says the video is on Twitter. I have to go look. I have to go look later. That would be, that would be death, right? Video of death. Ew. Hmm. Just kind of scan in the market. Knesset says it's really sad. It is really sad. It is definitely really sad. It's interesting. When I look through my instruments, almost everything was positive at one point. Let's see here. The biggest positive at one point was oil at 0.39. No, 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 no. NQ. NQ was up 0.62 at one point. Hmm. But then who's the biggest loser? The Dow. Wonder how uh how good of a trade spreading the Dow and the NQ has been. <coughs> That looks like that's the spread, right? Makes me oh, 
that's such a that's such a no duh trade. I'm I'm really surprised that I that we haven't talked about that yet. Operation Warp Speed awards Novavax 1.6 billion for COVID vaccine. Okay. American judge says he is tentatively inclined to reject Bayer's Monsanto settlement. Oh yes. Who's the Knesset say spread trading after all these years is still alien to me because I am a dummy? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's not so complicated. You you buy NQ and you sell the Dow. In a certain ratio. The kink in cash mountain not getting met by an increase in equity flow. From the marketeer. And I can see... Sunday driver says bubonic plague is spreading in China. Also, swine flu is spreading in China. Well, no, I, I thought it was Canada. I am a simply volatility envelopes kind of man, LMAO. There you go. I thought it was in Canada where they were talking about bubonic plague. It didn't sound like it was a significant thing. And I think I don't, well, I don't actually know. Bubonic plague is not typically a huge concern anymore, right? Like, people have somewhat immunity to that. Hmm. So they're showing that government money market is increasing and equity is not really going up. Hmm. I don't know what, to, what I think about that. Sunday driver says Inner Mongolia is having a big spread of bubonic plague, apparently. Uzi Knesset says pandemics are the new way to manipulate societies, expect them to suddenly become very common. Right. They're, they're going to... Um, vastly uh, overstate the impact of them. I think you're right. Although I, I kind of have to question if that was really the case that why would, because you don't want to shut down your economy all the time, right? I, I can totally get overstepping on uh, measures to try and prevent the spread, that that gives you power. And, and Knesset people... says for Pete's sake, they found bubonic plague on Skid Row. Who cares? <laughs> right. Uh, it might just be, it might just be, I, I think that a, probably a better explanation is just that the media is looking for a story. You know, like last week, their story really was, like we were kind of talking about yesterday, the story was like an increase in cases and people don't seem to be moved by that right now. Well, yesterday I was saying, I don't think that the bear case really makes a whole lot of sense. I think that we have to say I'm wrong about that because there's definitely two way trade going on up here. Um, but it just doesn't seem like the public is a very moved by changes in coronavirus anymore. They're kind of over it, I think. Winston's mom says good morning. Today is the 7th. Hi, everyone. Speculator Seth, ready for today. Apparently not, because I had it that it was the 6th. Let's fix that. By the way, yesterday, yesterday, guys, I think we had like 20 likes on the video. Super impressive. Uzi Knesset says because they're over it. I called that shit two months ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and and the other thing is, is even for the people that are really still concerned about it, there there is fatigue for it. Like they just can't get themselves to, you know, like like the thing is, is that the pandemic, the the shutdown procedures are basically forcing people to do things against their nature, and you can only continue doing that for so long before you're you're gonna you know, you're going to lighten up, you're going to, yeah. Yeah, yesterday's video had lots of views afterwards too. But you know what gets the most video views though is that trading computers video. I'm getting almost 150 views a day on that video now. Whoa. 
Posey I Knesset says it's a political issue now, the dichotomous reactions to similar activities based solely on political ideologies put the nail in the coffin of the public concern. No, that could be true too. That could be very true. That um, it's it's become more of a, it, it's no longer a, like an everybody issue, it's a partisan issue. Although I, I don't, I have found that not, there is, there is definitely a, a political, sorry, like a reaction that is related to political ideology, but I don't think that it's as, as simple as Democrat versus Republican, because there are definitely some Republicans out there that are overly triggered about it. And I think that it has more to do with uh, the, the degree of conscientiousness, you know? Like, uh, I mean, really, the thing in the end is that I think the conservative argument is that... Um, Uzi Knesset says COVID has taught me if there's no more proficient way to terrorize a society than feed them real-time illness and death statistics that until 2020 they've never experienced before. Yeah, it, it seems like uh, the argument is that uh, public safety shouldn't outweigh personal freedom. That's, that's the argument. Winston's mom says which video, I will leave a comment and timestamp when you upload T-Zero Day. Oh, well, yesterday's video, which was uh, uh, markets higher but crowded or something like that, I got like 200 views, which is a little slightly above average. Oh, but the one, that, the one that's doing really well is, is trading, uh, trading computer hardware where it really matters. And uh, that video is doing really well. I, you know, when I made that video, I, uh, ooh. hold on. Uzi Knesset says we can wear our own masks, wash our own hands, and avoid touching our own faces. We do not need the government to prevent us from getting sick. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do think with the, the, the hospitalizations and stuff like that, that there was definitely reason to be concerned about the coronavirus. And I still think that, um, shutdowns, probably necessary in this particular case. Winston's but, mom says trading computer hardware. Yeah, I'm really concerned that it's going to become a regular thing where there's going to be people trying to say that we need to shut down or we need to impose extraordinary um, extraordinary measures for run-of-the-mill diseases. Like, we didn't do any of this stuff for swine flu, you know? Anyways, that when I made that trading computer hardware video, that was a video that I was like, you know, this is like one thing that I am definitely an expert in. Uh, I'm the computer geek, and I think that I, there's a lot of stuff that I can say about it that will be meaningful to to people, and this could potentially be one of my biggest videos. So when I was making it, I originally I was like. You know, I got to build up to it and make sure that I've got a good base going so that when that video goes, that it can just run. And and then I had a baby <laughs> and we were going to make the video before the baby. But, you know, it just didn't happen because I got super sick. Um, But, you know, so I just was like, well, screw it. I'm just going to make it. I'm just going to put it out. And you know what? It worked anyways. And I, I learned that um, really the, the thing that matters is that your content is good. Because I think that I made good content that be useful for a large number of people. I now I'm just sitting here thinking like, well, man, I need to come up with uh, videos that are just as good. <laughs> no problem. One of the problems that I see is that I a lot of the stuff that our audience wants to look for is going to be strategies, which is not really the right way to look about it. You know what I mean? We'll see. I have a couple of ideas. Want to make a video about just trading in fast markets and why you should use a DOM. Um, I think that that would be an important video to have onto the channel, even though I think that's a subject that's been done before. And um, oh, we want to make that video we were talking about the other day with uh, trading Nirvana. And Sunday uh, Driver says isn't that a strategy, though. Um, the trading nirvana thing or the executing on the dom? I don't know. I don't really consider it a strategy. To, to me, a strategy is like 
when you see this technical indicator and this technical indicator, you go along and, you know, that sort of a thing. And, and from that, well, I guess from that respect, I don't have strategies. I just don't do it. Sunday driver way. says not having a strategy is a strategy. There you go. There you go. No, let's see here. No, 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 no. Oh, that was something else. Oh, yes, that's right. I need to make a video about backtesting strategies. That one's really, really important. <clears throat> Beginner mistakes, maybe that's another one that we could do. I have a couple of videos. No, I have a couple of videos that are good. I don't think that any of them are as good as the hardware one, though. I don't think that any of them will be as popular as that. Well, there was that fast little move down at the beginning, but now since then they've been up. Sunday driver says, is there one for just getting started? Well, I, I have a getting started with futures video. I, I at some point I probably need to redo that video because um, okay, we can do a much better job with it. Gary Rich says at UZI, did your husky get COVID yet? I'm hearing rumors dogs may carry it. I got the border collie on notice. <laughs> Sunday driver says, does the trading computer hardware one need to get updated? No, no, no. That one was brand new. But getting started in futures, that was one of the first videos that I did. And Winston it's not Smock says, if you title a video with MBTI in it, you might be surprised by the views. There is a lot of us. You know, there's, uh, we could do one about that. Because there was somebody else, I don't know. I, I want, I think it was a video though. I don't know, but there was there was this whole thing about that there were the personality trait of developing a plan and executing on it was the, the most um the attribute most Easy correlated with Gary success. Rich, not that I'm aware of lol. I think the the whether dogs can catch it or not is still kind of a little tepid. Right. Like they have some evidence that it happens, but it's not like a huge thing yet. Sunday driver says, what personality is best for trading? I am an INTJ. Well, it's it's that I it's that willingness to develop a plan and execute on it is the thing that matters. When you get people that want to just feel things out all of the time, then you uh, you just run inconsistently and you never learn the things that you need to to be successful in the market you have to be systematic it says i'm not terribly worried about it either i get it and don't realize it get it and sleep for three days or die i'm fine with all three scenarios to be honest it's kind of funny the way there's there's kind of a really strange i don't know i, I almost want to call it an Winston's oxymoron mom says gary rich dogs do not pass covid according to the nih ferrets do uh, okay i mean it could jump Certainly could. Um, <clears throat> no, so like having some having some rigid plan that is just based on technical indicator this and technical indicator this, and you always execute on it. Um, I I have found that you're unlikely to be successful. With Gary that. Rich says personality has nothing to do with trading. Nothing, nothing. So on your unlikely to find a holy grail sunday driver they says exist. take your vitamin d vitamin d is huge when it comes to defending against woo flu i think so yeah i from from what i've seen uh holy grails can exist but you are extremely unlikely to find it and so really you need to be good at responding to what the market is doing which means understanding what's going on understanding what the drivers are and executing off of that um but not just, you know, a, a, a purely systematic approach from technicals. So it's kind of like you need to have, a, well, you don't need to have that personality. I mean, anybody can 
develop a plan and execute on it. But the people that that naturally want to do that sort of a thing are more likely to be successful. But that personality attribute also causes you to go down paths that aren't likely to be successful because you want to try and develop something that will work all the time regardless of the circumstances, which it just is just tends not to work. You know what I mean? Gary Rich says I'm going to date Chinese women so I can receive the antibodies until a vaccine is developed. I don't think it works. <laughs> I don't think it works that way, Gary. <laughs> you know what, though? I so so could could we like hard hard turn to a different subject? I I the the title of today's video because I got trade war round three. Um, it seems, uh, and I'm not a hundred percent sure where this is coming from or, or why this is happening. It, it seems though that China is making moves. I would think an extroverted social butterfly would have a hard time staring at multiple terminals and creating how it goes. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's other things, but anyways, I don't know why it's like all of a sudden now, but the United States definitely seems to be responding to um, China and this sort of like Cold War Three thing starting, right? It's like, I don't know, is this kind of all at once? Gary Rich says, well, darn, I better stop reading Zero Hedge on COVID solutions. <laughs> Did they say that? I don't know. So one of the things that I saw was that um, Mike Pompeo was talking about banning TikTok, which is like, whoa, it's kind of an interesting one because we all know that TikTok, TikTok requests permissions from your phone that are pretty obscene. Okay, um, they are collecting a lot of data, and the Chinese government could certainly take advantage of that data. But the company is very specific to state that China doesn't have access to it, and that the servers are elsewhere, and this and that, and the other. Um, so TikTok says that it's not a concern, but of course everybody's concerned about it. And so the administration is talking as seriously as banning TikTok. Can can you believe that? And I'm just I'm just starting to think that like um, you know it, it seems like all of a sudden we're just on a trajectory for a, a new Cold War which I just don't understand how it's so fast or why it's happening now, but I can only guess that there must be some information that the U.S. government has that we don't, that, that kind of is causing them to start reacting this way. But if that's really the way that it's going to go, this is going to be really interesting. You know what I mean? Like... If we're going to have a Cold War three, that's not just it's not going to be like a, it's not going to be the same thing as the first Cold War. It, it's probably I don't think that it will be like constant um, threat of nuclear winter, although certainly um, nuclear weapons will be a part of it. But it seems to me that it really has more to do with the battle on technology like. Um, they're developing better quantum technology and, and that sort of a stuff, you know? Um, and, and it's really, it's an economic war. And if it's really an economic war, we're like the front lines, guys. Like yes, yesterday, the thing that was moved the markets up was that the Chinese government through the financial newspaper was basically saying like the most important thing for our country right now is to have a strong stock market. So they were they were basically telling the Chinese people and and the supporters of the government like we need to start buying stocks that's how we're going to win. And when you when you understand it that way like our role in it is kind of like ooh okay I think maybe there's some things that we need to do. You know what I mean? Mm -mm. Read all these comments. Sunday driver says the way to defeat the United States is to send all their hotties to the United States. 
they'd have us on our knees in six months. Winston's mom says Sunday driver NTJs I am one, can learn anything but we lean away from risk. NTJs mm -hmm. are good while STPs are risk takers. TE accuracy S best for trading and pattern recognition knee, helps. <laughs> I2Yanth Great says TikTok is owned by the Chinese Gov. Uzi Knesset says I say ban it, we don't need another social media app to annihilate the youth culture to any more of a degree than it already is. I2 Yanth Great says they have backdoors. Yasin Hamoud says I think it is for the best they ban TikTok. Mm. Gary Rich says believing TikTok doesn't steal data for China is like believing women won't get mad at silly stuff. Uzi Knesset says that Gary Rich people are ages still cling to the delusion that social media is beneficial for society. Hmm. Well, that's a different, that's a different question, isn't it? I2 Yanth Great says TikTok gives the Chinese gov access to any phone. It's on due oh, to yeah. kernel level exploits on all CPUs. It's worse than you think. No, you're right. What, what, what TikTok, the permissions that you give that application are obscene. I think that part of it is that TikTok is doing some things to tell if you like a video beyond just how long did you look at it. I think that it's actually like listening to you and, and watching your reactions. No joke. It's a little scary, isn't it? But um, yeah, I don't know. That's just what the company says. I'm just I'm just saying I'm not saying they're they're right or wrong or anything. Sweet. Oh, I would give uh, somebody a, a package of indicators to test and it looks like it's working for them. Uzi Knesset says, I remember when I worked grocery retail back when the wine trend of gallon smashing was popular, I forced some dipshit kid to clean the mess he made or I'd have him arrested for shoplifting. Oh, man. I remember that. That was a long, long time ago. That was a really long time ago. Sunday Driver says, I hear that TikTok basically dumps your phone data into Chinese computers. It even lifts your clipboard. Uzi Knesset says, yeah, man, we're old lol. I, I think the thing is, is that we know that, that it has certain permissions, but we don't actually have any proof that the Chinese government themselves are actually accessing that data. It's just taking way more data than it probably should. Gary and Rich says social media with all apps are just sugary snacks for the masses. Results diabetic delusions of dumb. I mean, I think that that uh, social media can be done in a way that's beneficial, but I, I think that there's a couple of problems that have to be addressed. I too, Yanth Great says it's building a personality profile for all Americans. They can blackmail you, etc. All this data is held on secret server facilities in China and Utah for the U.S. governed Prism Project. Mm -hmm. Uzi Knesset says, I find it funny that you need proof that an authoritarian communist government would harvest your data to further its own goals, lol. Well, I, I'm, in, in order for me to say that that's confirmed, I can't, I can't sit down and say something that we know something is true unless we really truly know it. I mean, even as silly as that sounds, but, but when we're streaming, I, we have certain responsibilities. Uh, you know, I don't consider myself to be an expert on this. I've certainly said things on the stream, I'm sure, where I've made a mistake. Um, but I've been been uh, watching communities and watching the internet and politics in particular and, and Ooh, how the mob reacts. There are some things you won't do based on common sense, things you won't risk. Why does all that vanish for social media experiences? Yeah, so I, I'm, uh, you know maybe overly cautious at times but that's one of the things that I I2 I've learned rate says just google prism nsa got to be careful about what we say happens and doesn't happen i'm totally cool with discussing conspiracy theories as long as we don't hold them as fact when they're not actually proven so i know that Prison Gary Rich thing, says at UCI Seth has never worked or enlisted in the military or those dark three letter agencies. Hint, hint. You know, I was watching a Netflix uh, series about America's secrets and things like what the stuff the FBI does and everything. I found it really interesting. Um, but I, I don't think that that kind of work would be for me. I think that if I ended up working for one of those agencies, that the kind of stuff that they would have me doing would be stuff that I wouldn't be interested in. You know, 
So I'm not interested in parsing all of the data that they've harvested on people. Like what Edward Snowden was doing. No interest in doing that. No interest. Uzi Knesset says what's the downside of taking the precaution and never using the app at all, though even if it were an irrational concern, what do you lose by not using it? Well, not nothing. I just I just don't want to say something that's potentially untrue, that's all. But but you're if you're concerned about your data, I mean that's the thing is that to me, I don't I don't particularly I mean look, I'm a purse public, pretty public anyways, right? I mean, anybody can develop a psychological profile of me. If there's anybody on the internet you can do it for, it's me, right? So th- that, them having my data doesn't necessarily concern me so much as what they could potentially do in the long run with it, you know? But I don't know if there's a whole lot you can do to stop that sort of stuff. I also am a little skeptical about... uh. The, the limits, so, so we talk about social media and how social media has been negative for people, but I, I think a lot of that is unfamiliarity. Uzi Knesset says it's all CCP will be the global government soon enough anyway, LMAO. Yeah, right. I'm just, I'm just covering my tracks in case the communists take over, I guess. Mm-hmm. Sunday driver says does deleting the app really get rid of it? We know that it exceeds its stated permissions. Mm, with the way the Android works, I'm going to say yes it does. Cuz it wouldn't uh you know unless it's it would have to be like a real rootkit, I don't know. There there would have to be exploits in that that I would think Google would put a stop to in order to do that sort of a thing. Unless of course they're not aware. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I, I think a lot of the problems with social media are because you have a, a large group of people that um, aren't really very familiar with using social media, haven't been on the content creation side of it, and. Sunday don't Driver know says how Google to, is evil, too. So is Apple. They have us in a box. You know? Well, you got to realize that a lot of people are going through things that most of us internet nerds went through 10 years ago. You know what I mean? We've 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 played through the the oh hey. Gary Rich they says at Google FB and... all the Silicon Valley cuz are in bed with the gov. They are not as innocent as people want to believe they are. Uzi Knesset says the user experience has nothing to do with the detrimental effects of social media. It's all psychological. Well, sure it is, because the the whole thing is is that people take things that they've read on social media to be fact when it's not. So they haven't realized how how utterly unreliable information online is, and um, they they don't realize the effect that uh, extreme dopamine overload can have on your mind, right? I'm just saying when you've been doing it for heck man I've been I've been on in let's say I mean when I started social media didn't really exist okay so I've been on social media as long as it's been around but then you know I was doing forums and everything it's been 20 years now right and the social media has been around for over a decade now and there are a lot of people that only got involved in 2016. Like all, all of this stuff about, oh, you can hack, you can control large groups of people and hack people with with this technology and Democrats are getting all upset Uzi about Knesset it. You come from the open dairy world too, lol. RJ Wheel says everybody is talking. No one is listening. 90 PCT of social media interaction is it's, one way. It, it's like a lot of the things that people are getting concerned about now, it's like, oh, now you're worried about it? Now you're worried about it? You weren't worried about it back when, like, Obama basically became president off of it? Well, let's say he didn't become... He won straight up. Obama won 
the Democrat primary because he used social media better. There's no question about it in my mind. That was, I don't want to say that that's like controlling people. You know, like Uzi they tried to say with Trump. Open diary in the late 91st real social media experience, its effects were evident even then. But, but that was the strategy that put him over the top, was their use of social media. There's no question about it. And people are concerned about it now? Really? I think that RJ you were just kind of overlooking it. You were just kind of overlooking it because at the time, it supported the political things that you wanted. Now, what are you realizing? And here's the thing. Social media, it's no different than any other, you know, human phenomenon, right? Gary Rich says, Mommy Bird is here to make you think. This is the age of disinformation. You know, um, this, the same sort of things that in society have been used to push communities towards communism, those existed before social media. And this is no different. And I don't think that the answer is, oh, okay, well, we'll just get rid of the thing. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. I think that the answer is, is that people have to be aware and that society has to be able to adjust. Sunday right. Driver says, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The internet has made the world worse off. We should get rid of all of it. Analog world was better. See, I just, no, I don't think I can get on board with that. It's can't sound out of the bag now. Winston's mom it. says, Midnight Cowboy, everybody's talking, Nielsen. Mm, Deutsche Bank hit with a $150 million penalty for a relationship to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. And that Deutsche Bank, man. Oh, man. You're, I remember a year ago there was somebody that was uh, would regularly come on. I forget his name, but you regularly come on and thought, oh, you know, Deutsche, Deutsche Bank is going to go under any day now. And I was like, uh, probably there's problems, but that they just keep going. And what nothing has happened, has it? Even though it seems like the problems over at Deutsche Bank have gotten worse since then. <laughs> Trump renews culture war, putting GOP on an edge. Story from the Hill. I, I don't agree with this this take just just the take from the headline let's read this this story president trump is sharpening his attack on cultural issues in a return to a political safe haven that has some republicans on the defensive ahead of november the president in the last two weeks has described the phrase black lives matter as a symbol of hate threatened to veto a massive defense policy bill if it includes an amendment to strip the names of Confederate leaders for military bases, criticize NASCAR's decision Sunday to ban Sunday Driver says, I worked with Deutsche Bank. Black. They had a good trading desk. Still might for all I know. And said the Cleveland Indians and Washington Redskins were considering name changes to be politically correct. Yeah, I, I don't agree with the take that Donald Trump is forcing a focus on social issues to help his election. I think that it was the Democrat Party that pushed those things, and he is just responding in kind because he feels that if he doesn't do anything that the United States culture will go down a black hole through which it cannot recover from. Although his take on some of these issues is a little... Sunday Driver says, I was glad when Lehman went under. They always screwed up settlement. My life got easier when they went down. Lol. Oh, really? <laughs> There's definitely different roles that those different banks played that when they got out of the business, you didn't really have anybody that could replace them. And uh, Lehman, and then who, who was the other one? The... Um, uh, I can't remember. There was another investment bank that was kind of more trading based. Who's he was like, or Facebook gave? Uh, um, all of uh, all of Goldman's competition basically went under. <laughs> it was just Goldman and J.P. Morgan. R.J. Wheel says Bear Stake S. Hmm. Facebook gave in. I don't see that yet. R.J. Wheel says Stearns. 
Sunday driver says Merrill Lynch. There you go, Merrill Lynch. I think that's that's who I'm thinking of, yeah. It was really was like the the big competition for the trading activity from for Goldman and kind of was gone. Um but then that that was the thing is that without any competition like the train cop Gary Rich says died. Nope Deutsche Bank is part of the too big to fail list. They're deemed financially and economic to the global system. Probably. Mm -hmm. So here's another one that I'm seeing on in politics that I think is a silly thing. Uh, 40 Trump connected lobbyists secured over 10 billion in coronavirus relief for clients, says the report. Well, like when you're giving away, how much freaking money did they give away with the the coronavirus RJ relief? Wheel says Deutsche is a CIA bank of choice. Listen, when you're giving away a trillion dollars in stimulus, I'm sure that some people connected with Trump are going to receive some of it. That's not surprising because everybody's getting the money, man. That it's such a blatantly it's if you really think about it, it's it sounds it's I mean, it's, a, it's a great political play, right? Oh, they're they must be doing something corrupt. They're only just giving their money to their friends. But when you realize that everybody's getting it, it's really a dumb Sunday story. Isn't says, it? I've always believed that big U.S. financial firms also serve as spy agencies, and spy for agencies feds. for the feds. Well, n nah, not not exactly. I mean. They are required to, I tell you what, the amount of uh, training that goes into detecting fraud and, and knowing what to do in all of these different situations is super, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say it's spying. Gary I think everybody says knows. It's not that. probably the IMF, World Bank, and each country has their list of banks too big to not fail. I'm, I think that everybody understands that there's a... Uh, they're looking for that sort of stuff to report. Especially especially the trading desks, because that's a good way to launder money. If the bank goes along with it, it's really it's the best way to launder money. Mm -mm -mm. Feds Bostic, the Feds lending facilities have eased the strain on markets. Now, yeah, yeah, his speech started at the top of the hour. And again, we don't have any data until 10 o'clock, so. I, I have to say, so far, the market's been pretty dead. I, I We'll see what happens when the E-mini opens here in 15 minutes, but so far, the decision to just kind of not touch it, I think, has been good. Um, anyways, go, I want to go back to the social media thing. Because, you know, so here's something that happened yesterday. Um, my little girls, they, they, have, they have moved on to new YouTubes. They used to watch this guy with an Australian accent that was like always like way overly excited about everything. And him and his family were making like videos and it was all like designed to be dramatic, but you knew that it was all fake. Well, now they're watching. Gary uh, Rich says banks have been laundering money for illicit means since the dawn of time. Now, now they're watching some. I, I, it seems like it was a, it's a channel kind of geared towards, you know, teens, which for the younger one. She's like nine, and the older one is 10, 11. So, so it seems like they're maybe a little bit too young for this stuff, but that's that's what they're watching. And the video that I was seeing was like, um, it was like these teenagers and their group of friends, and they were having a kissing contest for ten thousand dollars. So, Sunday driver says, if you work in China or Hong Kong for a U.S. finance company, then you might be a CIA asset. Just saying. Oh, there you go. Um. But they were, they, so it was like whoever um, kissed the longest won $10,000. Okay. But uh, just, just to give you an idea of what kind of content is on this channel. And um, yesterday, the, the kids was like, you know, like, this is something super important to tell you about. So I don't know. 
I tell you, sometimes I'll tell my wife stuff like like the whole uh, streamer world drama that has been happening over the past week, especially the flame war between Ninja and XQT. I, I found that entertaining. Maybe my wife doesn't find that entertaining. I don't know because she kind of just pretends she's really good at it. Um, but I kind of sit there and I'm like, what? So they were saying, oh, the, the people on this YouTube channel, they broke up. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like the dumbest thing ever. I'm, think, I'm thinking through about it. I'm like, well, to a teenage girl, that would seem like a big deal. But to a teenage girl, they would also probably know that their father probably doesn't give a shit about that. But they seem felt like it was an important thing to share. <laughs> was was that this this uh, teenage couple with a YouTube channel broke up, and I was like, I was joking around with them about it because from my perspective, it's like, well, what can I do to uh, turn Gary this Rich into says a Seth positive put a thing? Stop to that stuff or pole dancing, maybe a future outcome. Right? Not good. I'm like, how, how can I turn this into a positive learning experience? Let's analyze what is the global impact of this change. Oh, nothing, nothing will, nothing will change. No, we, we can analyze the impact of the, the thing. Will it affect their YouTube channel? Will the guys still be on the YouTube channel? What are the short term and long term? We can analyze this. They weren't interested in analyzing it, though. Uh, my wife was like, well, you can't. You, you probably shouldn't be, you know, joke around with it like that because what they'll learn is that you're just not interested in that stuff. And then when they have something interesting to actually tell you or, or important to tell you about their lives, they won't tell you because they don't think that you'll care, which I think was a, a really legitimate point. So I'm sitting here thinking now, okay, so like what's the best way to go about this so that my children don't become vapid, you know, Ozzy Knesset says YouTubers descending into irrelevance as the years progress will be an interesting thing to watch play out publicly. Oh, you know, this has always happened, Uzi. You just never, we just never hear about it. Ah, uh, whatever happened to Lonely Girl 15? Mm, that's probably the best example. You know where she's at? Mm? That, that whole thing just kind of like slowly died down, right? Yep. Big, big celebrities, they, they have their time in the sun and they, they go into the distance. And it really takes um, talented people. Sunday with... Driver says perhaps you should introduce them to something less harmful than YouTube. Perhaps only fans. <laughs> oh my gosh. The number of people out there with only fans is insane. I should go start an OnlyFans. That would be that. <laughs> oh man. No. Uh... Gary Rich says Seth learned to beat your kids and they will stop it. No. Feeding kids great no. Again. No. How how do I how do I get my kids to understand? Like it's okay. Uzi Knesset says, "Oh, I pay attention to it." Lol. Boogie two thousand nine hundred eighty eight. Fuzzy Tube Edge. Watching them have public mental breakdowns will be its own form of entertainment. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm just trying. To, oh, by the way, I'm seeing some big movement in the five year. But where was that? Probably, probably it was this this order at twenty one half. A anyways, I just don't know how to get them to. You know, it's it's cool to have entertainment and to understand that it's entertainment, and in, and even if it's like the the dumbest form of entertainment, as long as you kind of understand that, but. I'm concerned, like, how do you get, get them to understand that, like, oh, okay, here are things that are important in life, and, um, you know, these, these sorts of things might be harmless entertainment, but we should also understand the potentially negative things about that. How do you, I mean, because if, if they were 21, then I could, say, I could explain that, and I could explain the psychological things about it, and, and how to get yourself... Uh, more knowledgeable about things that that might actually matter so that you could have an impact on the world how do you explain that to like 10 year olds you know what i mean I, it's just going back to the social media thing it, it seems to me 
that um, we can change the way that the social media networks function in a way that would be um, more positive for society, um, could make the uh, social media experience more positive for the users and and potentially make more money as a result. But what they're doing right now is they're just going for the raw number. They're saying, like, what is the thing that increases the engagement the most? And, And that's not necessarily what's right for people. And when you, the reason it's a, such a problem, I don't think that it's anything inherent to social media. I think it's just our unfamiliarity with it, right? We've run into issues like this as a society many times before. And the way that we deal with it is we, we teach our kids and we know, okay, this thing happens, this thing happens. It's important for us to tell our kids about this thing, right? It's important to tell, to, to teach people about how, mobs can get out of control and we we have you know when you're watching little kid tv shows this is a common plot line is that you know people think that something is going bad and so they start accusing everybody of stuff and then they find out that all of their accusations were wrong Uh, you know this is that's how we teach that sort of stuff and we have not quite gotten to the point in social media where we understand enough about those lessons to start teaching them, you know? So I guess that was the whole point. So here I have a, an issue. This is one that I think is timeless with fathers, right? Is that uh, teenage girls are interested in, uh, you know, the social stuff. And they can often get themselves caught into, you know, a world. This is, this is, and we have stories about this, right? It's called the movie Mean Girls. That's what that movie is about. Right? Young Hong says re. But, but for somebody that's trying to, to raise up a generation of future analysts, uh, there's not really a, there's not really a script for that one. You know what I mean? (laughs) And I'm afraid that, like, my only option is to do it in the most boring way possible and that they will hate it as a result. Mm, Fed's plastic businesses are getting nervous again, worried the virus has been going on longer than they had planned for. Oh, it absolutely has. Listen, everybody thought that this was going to be over by May. Two months later. Zero Hedge, what are smart stocks smoking? Five minutes. Let's see where we go. We're still below the overnight VWAP. I tell you what, if, if you use overnight VWAP, I've noticed that we tend to trail pretty far away from it. Mm. If Washington changes their nickname, what should they change it to? Hmm. So I have a thought about this one too. Because Donald Trump was saying, and I was about to get into it, but then we got sidetracked. Um, Some of the approaches that Donald Trump has to these social issues, it's very much like Boomer. It's very Boomer-esque to me. I don't think he realizes that there's more diplomatic ways that that can both um, destroy the 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 well. I'm I'm hit against cancel culture while being nuanced enough to not be insensitive. Like with the the Washington Redskins, I think Donald Trump is right that you know you name those you you name them after something that was strong, and so. To be have a team named the Redskins is supposed to be something that is um, flattering, but I don't think so. I think the the problem with the name is that you you also name yourselves off after something that 
isn't a thing anymore. Really, you think about it, right? Like teams, teams name themselves after things that are, are not real or are very much like a concept or, you know, don't have like a real, like current group of people that is associated with it, right? So why you pick an animal or, you know, you'll, you'll pick a society that's gone like Vikings, right? Vikings aren't around anymore. But see, um, well, and Redskins, I don't know if that one's, because that's kind of also a description for them that wouldn't, that, that they wouldn't want to be called Redskins. So you want to get rid of it, right? They want to get rid of it. I think that they should. They shouldn't. Um, it's unfortunate that they had to be like shamed into it. But you could make a sports team that is still the uh, Indian Sunday driver team. says whites don't seem to mind. I think they should rename the Redskins to the Great White Fathers. <laughs> no, you, you just uh, name it after an animal or, or a, a spiritual RJ Wheel proxy. says or honor a city's rich history with jazz. Yeah, there you go. It, so, so that it's not, so that it's not referencing like a living group. It makes sense. Gary Rich says Seth is a closeted, a closeted progressive, progressive and, liberal. and liberal. I think that um, most of the people that I know are liberal. Young Hong says rename them Dodo Birds because they're going to be extinct. And and I and I think that uh, in some cases I can provide a way of explaining things or a avenue. Uh, RJ Wheel says proposal. I think it will be the DC Redskins. People are offended by Washington. <laughs> no. Oh, that was great, RJ. <laughs> You're right there. The people offended. I, you know what was the funniest thing that I saw was okay. Here, here's the open, by the way. Sunday funniest Friday thing I saw the Conquistadors. was was the Washington Post saying that these schools should rename themselves because they were named after Washington. Like, who did did the person that wrote this story not know that it was going to be published in the Washington Post? Like, what? Oh man, no, no, no! You, you choose, choose it. You know, for for the Indian tribe that was in in area in the area, pick a mascot for that Indian tribe, so it can still be Indian themed and it can be flattering to the Indian. But you're not using a racist name and you're not referencing like the group of people. I, it, I it can still be okay. Gary Rich says the Redskins' name is only offensive to white liberals who speak for minorities who didn't ask for this. Nah, that's not true. You're wrong. There, there, the, this whole thing has been going on for years from the local tribes in the Washington area that don't like it. That it always started with that, and it's only now that other people have gotten on board with them. And I, I don't think that that's fair <clears throat> to present it that way. They, they, the, the minorities didn't like, don't like it. That that minority doesn't like it, and and I think that that should be a consideration. Sunday driver says, "Didn't they get buy-in from Indians something like seventy years ago?" Probably, but it's different now. I mean, I, here's here's the thing: is you got to pick and choose your battles, right? I don't think that conservatives are doing a good job at picking and choosing battles right now. I think that we got so much into the um, the mindset of whatever the liberals want to do um, is a bad thing, and we need to fight against them. And you know, RJ for a long Will time that was true. If I was true. the owner, I'd love it. Change the name. It's a resale to all their fans of caps, mugs, keychains, sweatshirts, etc. It's a huge money maker. Yeah, exactly. Here's here's a case where it is the name. Of the sports team, really? Gary Rich says, how big is that tribe in the bigger picture? So one person gets offended and we change everything. Get screwed, keeping mm. it clean. It's like it's like one thing it, that doesn't really matter that you can change and make people happy. And like RJ Will says, you make more money on it. Like, this it's not the place that you should make your last stand. It's just not. That's that's one that you can surrender on and get an easy win. 
it's an easy win to just to just say, you know. Sunday driver says conservatives suck at the culture wars. Whenever something comes up, our icons get pulled down across the whole country. No. Well, I think that the, the reason that um, conservatives lose the culture war is because they pick their battles poorly. You, we fight on everything, and we fight on things that, frankly, we're wrong on. And so then, when it comes to the things that are actually important, people don't take us seriously because we already fought against a number of things that we shouldn't have fought on. So the name of the Washington Redskins is not really a very important thing. And if we make that the big deal, then how, then are we going to be taken seriously when we're going into things that I think matter, like how the founding fathers are portrayed or, um, you know, dealing, you know, the real issues like dealing with the issues of absent fathers in our society, right? And you try and talk about that and whether they just can say, oh, it's just those conservatives being, you know, conservative and pushing against progress in society because they, they don't like new things. We don't get taken seriously. That's why we lose on those things. You've got to pick and choose your battles. You have a limited amount of political capital. Spend it wisely. Spend it on the things that matter. Give them the things that don't matter. Similarly, we have to, and then I think there's the other thing that they don't do, that conservatives don't do. They're starting to do, and it's helped. Is you've got to force them to make the same kind of concessions. Sunday driver says we play by the left's rules. Ann Coulter, for example, demanding that Yale change its name. Yeah. Bum. Progressives would like that name changed, too. They should send a fruit basket to Ann Coulter. And Ann Coulter has already always been a charlatan that just wants some media attention. We, we, we all, I think we all understand that one. No, so, so then the other thing is, is that liberals are never forced to make their own concessions on issues that conservatives have a strong hand Young on. Young Hong says NQ40 point MVOVE in four minutes. Okay, like late-term abortion. Why, why, is, why is there not a bigger battle over late-term abortion? The majority of Americans believe that you should not be able to abort a pregnancy in the ninth month, you just have the baby. You just have the baby. There's no reason to ever have an abortion in that case. And and if there's a case where like it's medically necessary to have an emergency thing, then you get that approved by your doctor or whatever. It's fine. But we can make a, a, a law that says that late-term abortion is not allowed unless it's extraneous medical circumstances. Why are conservatives not pushing that? That is something that you could push and would be devastating to Democrats because something like 70% of Americans agree with it. And we don't force them to make concessions. Sunday Driver says conservatives need to attack media. I think Laura Luma knows how to do this. Yeah. They, don't, they don't go for the easy wins because they're constantly playing defense on things that don't matter. make liberals play defense on things that don't matter guys mm -mm, if you're a conservative i mean i'll i'll give advice to liberals too but <laughs> that's the, i think that 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 the conservatives need it right now i used to give a lot of advice to the liberals didn't i thomas sawwell abraham lincoln once asked an audience how many legs a dog has if you count the tail as a leg they answered five lincoln told them the answer was four the fact that you called the tail a leg did not make well, it a leg. Mandatory abortion for adults. Oh, sorry, that's murder. Man, I can dream and dream scenarios both sides suck. <laughs> this is, so let me, let me pontificate on another thing since you brought that one up. Um, you just say both sides suck? No. Humans suck. This idea that, oh, we just need a third party. We just need third parties, and then a third party will arise that will hold the values that I have and won't be as crappy as the Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, it's not going to happen. You know why the two parties suck? Because people suck. <laughs> That's their nature. Probably better to deal with the beast that you have 
rather than just create more beasts. Trust me on this one, guys. It has not worked out so well for the com the countries that, that have a trillion parties, like the way that it goes in the UK, especially if you are a conservative person it is not advantageous to you. Yeah, there we go. Sunday driver talking about universal suffrage again. Nope. Don't agree. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about this yesterday a lot, actually. Is the kind of things that I'm concerned about and that I do with my kids are not the things that my wife is concerned about and that she does with the kids. And it seems to me that if either one of us was the sole source of parenting for those kids, that it would be an imbalanced and bad thing. And I think that it is the same with politics. And what we need to do is instead of saying, ah, only male ideas are the right things to be to approach politics or only female ideas are the right way to approach politics, that we start to look at what the differences are, why those differences exist, and how we can deal with those in order to make wise decisions when, when you know, neither can really fully understand the other side because we don't have the same hormones. We've done that in parenting. We understand, we understand that your wife is going to care about different stuff, right? One of the things is dad is the one that plays with the kids and roughhouses, and mom doesn't like roughhousing, but guess what? You're going to roughhouse anyways, right? We understand that now, but it's just, again, it's the unfamiliarity with it. The society doesn't understand the political implications of not just women having a vote, but being major political players. And how, what do we need to do in our culture to account for that so that we don't make foolish decisions off of it? Because if you just give one side complete control, you're just going to make bad decisions. <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read it. I don't agree Sunday with Driver that. says removing the vote from women would be an easy approach. And successful. But I'd settle for only having people vote who are productive and have a stake in the economy would work, too. Gary Rich says well start to beat your wife. It's in the Bible to beat your wife. Make wife beating great again. We are too soft as a society. Stop. 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 No. Not okay, guys. Not okay, guys. We're not going to... We're not going to take away rights from women. That's so, so bad. No, no, Winston's no, no, no. Winston's mom says diaper war round three. Trading futures live stream. The 7th of July, 2020. Please take a quick <laughs> second to hit like. For the dads like speculator Seth Biceps, Win. thanks. Oh, gosh, hon. Yeah, I, I hope that you're... Young Hong says YouTube ban incoming face with cold sweat. This is so great because here we, we got these guys like, ah, women shouldn't vote. And then Win just comes in with like the most hilarious comment. I love it. That's great. Listen, I'm telling you guys, women understand shit that we don't. Trading is a perfect example, right? Women have an approach to risk that is different and in my experience is more successful. They're, they don't understand when they need to press it and that's their problem, but they're less likely to just blow up. There's advantages to it. You can't, you to sit down and say, ah, this is the only the right way to go for society. It's myopic. Those traits wouldn't have evolved if they didn't serve a purpose. Or if you don't believe in evolution, God wouldn't have given us those attributes if they didn't have a purpose. We need both. Same goes for conservatives versus liberals. You give liberals complete control, they will implement untested ideas that are stupid and harmful to society. If you give conservatives complete control, then nothing ever changes and injustice will um, build up and build up over time. You got to have both. Mm, so, it's been 15 minutes. We've been really tight in the E-mini. I'm I'm not so sure that there's a very good opportunity today. Oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. Sunday driver says problem is that men will also have higher peaks. 
women will see those higher peaks as being signs of discrimination. Then, they pursue policies that destroy wealth. Like minimized everything. That's freaking hilarious. I don't know how I did that. I, I clicked on like the desktop in it. Ugh. Anyways. Pursue policies that destroy wealth. Oh, uh, I don't I don't think that the communism is a is a is a woman thing though. It's not. The thing the thing that women uh, that I think is more characteristic of women in politics is um empathy. Empathy in places where it will be de detrimental to your society, right? Like like in a personal case. Like because honestly when you think about you think about empathy as like being sensitive to the needs of somebody else right but it it is also i think that there's another facet to it and that is placing the needs of others ahead of your own needs and the thing that that many people don't understand is that if you always put other people's needs ahead of yours then you will just get run over and this is a, this is a problem that many women have right many women have that Problem in relationships where they just let their partner run over them and they get in with bad partner after bad partner who is toxic, you know. Um, and and so when you play that out on a political national scale, what you're doing is you're putting the needs of of somebody that might not have your best interests in mind, and you're you're giving them your sympathy. And your Sunday benefit? Driver says that empathy is what ultimately destroys society. Yeah. They place the needs of pathologically destructive ahead of the productive. Right. That's that's where from a political you gotta realize, ladies, if if you're listening, some sometimes you gotta be mean. You've gotta understand this. Sometimes you have to be mean because if you don't, it will mean the end. Okay. Women women are not. Uh, chemically predisposed to see when that is the case, and men are. Men, men always think. Men always think that that's the case. Gary you know? Rich says Seth gets run over by his wife, and he doesn't even know it. Maybe sell out. <laughs> sell out. I I definitely put my foot down on things. So, so this is an, another thing that I was wondering about. Sunday Driver says, I think I'm being a good influence on you, oh, Seth. Oh, so? Uh, I don't think I'm sharing anything that I haven't shared before, actually. I think we've had this conversation before, really. Many, many times. Um, oh, yeah. I was, I was, so going back to the whole thing that, like, men and women do things with their kids that are different and you need both. I remember there was this study about um, you know, men that weren't in the home and why did they tend not to be in the home? And one of the answers was that the wives really didn't like the things that the dad would come and do. Like they didn't like that if dad came over to visit that he wanted to rough house with the kids. And so he would always feel unwelcome. And, you know, I'm kind of wondering on that was like, okay, so when the woman is in charge those things don't happen but it's it must not be just about whether or not you're in charge because in a patriarchal society the things that the wife think are important still happen don't they so you know where's the where's the the right approach there because i don't think that you want to go in and tell people that uh men should always be in charge it's it's should be it really should be a partnership right but there's certainly some odd dynamic going on there you know what i mean well that's a pretty good buy so far up to 3160 that's getting into uh the uh well we built we built about 10,000 at 3153 
Yeah, that is that is getting into the bulk of the profile from yesterday. So if they stick around here, I think that we could very easily see the other side of this to like 3168. That's not a huge gap though. I don't think that uh I don't know if the risk reward is worth it for me there. Let's come back and look at our VIX targets and see what the VIX is telling us today. Gary Rich says Bloomberg News White House wants stimulus by August. Here comes more stimmy. 3180. RJ Wheel says just this year my golf course got bulldozed for houses. I wept in the parking lot because I spent the entire childhood of my children there. They bulldozed it, huh? Well, if the VIX target is 3180, that would put us towards the high of yesterday. There is something. And we should be cognizant that we've only really had one move so far from the open and that they could certainly still turn down. And Gary Rich says at RJ, what a sad, sad day for you. I feel for you. I, I, I am feeling a little FOMO. Like that I feel like I should get along at. DJ Spinglass says, are any but... conservatives worried about the environment? Hard to find. Probably the most important topic facing the planet. Mm -hmm. Overpopulation also needs to be addressed. Well, DJ no. Spinglass says we need to work with other countries to solve problems. Seems we don't try to work together enough with other countries. It's only growth, growth, growth. Well, so you got to understand with the, the issue of environment that uh, a lot of, so this is just, yeah, this is the difference. So like with population, um, population control is it's a total myth. Um, Young Hong says yeah. overpopulation. Just let the anti-vaxxers walk around in a year by themselves. Um, if you if you really talk to the the people that study this sort of a thing for a living, what they'll tell you is that in industrialized nations such as the United States, that the population growth has already flattened out. That's why they're pushing. Um, immigration and stuff because they're a lot of their systems rely on perpetual population growth instead of just you know efficiency and um other countries are growing like in particular africa but that those two will uh pop out and so eventually and i don't remember what the the ultimate number is but the world population in the next hundred years or so, is set to find an equilibrium. Um, so that is not something that people need to be concerned about or do things with. Um, now, with uh, with uh, environmental issues, that's I mean that's a whole can of worm, right? You you really have to take that issue by issue. That's so one of this is another issue that we really have in our society is we always want simple solutions to everything right we want to say well the solution should be we should always be concerned about the environment and what happens is that if you always take that fun you know fundamentalist approach then you're going to make bad, bad decisions you have to look at the um, pluses and minuses of of each individual issue and do the work just like in trading, I can't. You can't sit down and say every time X happens that Y will be the result. You can't sit down and say every time that I see this technical pattern, I buy it, and if I do that over time, that I will be successful. That doesn't work. It's more nuanced than that. The way that the world works is more nuanced than that, and you have to analyze each specific situation to see what is the optimal solution. <laughs> Young Hong says in Japan population is decreasing. Uzi Knesset says people don't want to talk about population control. The poorest nations on earth have the highest birth rate, so. Mm. Sunday Driver says and we need to cut that crap out. 
Our Western societies can do just fine with flat population growth. It's the Uber class that wants cheap labor. I totally agree. DJ Spinglass says in 100 years most of the animal and plant life on Earth will be gone. Ozzy mm. Knesset says unless you're ready to make the argument that the most helpless and destitute need to be exterminated, you may want to stay away from that conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're getting into something that I'm not really an expert in. I think I've pretty much said everything that I know about those issues. But I mean, that's the other thing is that um, don't let people tell you what's important and what's not. I mean, I can sit down and I can tell you in American society, the, the largest contributor to societal problems in the United States of America is, is absent fathers. There's no question about it. Does that mean that everybody should make that their issue du jour? Well, hardly anybody has that as their issue. There's not a whole lot of people pushing that. There should be, but there's not. But I can't t sit down and tell you that's what you need to focus on. It isn't exactly small. It will shake mankind off easily in the long run. I, uh, you know. DJ Spinglass says what is the most important problem facing the world? Gary Rich says the environmental movement has co-opted one of the biggest scams. Trillions of dollars lost because a seagull chokes on a plastic straw. <laughs> Don't uh, focus on the issue that interests you and that you're good at. My issue, the economics. Is ideological extremism. That's the thing that I've become an expert in, and that's my issue. And I, there Sunday are some things says that... there is no way most animal and plant life will be gone in 100 years. When I was a boy, some time ago, they said the same thing would happen when I was an adult. Far from it. Kenny Desmet says Novavax looking sexy. Oh, I bet after them being awarded the contract. I, I don't know. So they, they push up there. They're get, we're, now we're getting the pullback. DJ Spinglass says look at the numbers driver. Anyways. Can't be an expert in everything. And, and one of the issues that I think social media creates is this impression that you need to be concerned about every little thing that comes across your Facebook feed. And if this isn't like the foremost thing on your mind, then you're an awful person. It's, no, bullshit. Listen. You can't, you can't care about everything. You just can't. You don't have the energy. You pick your things. You, you, you have that ability. Or, I mean, but don't, don't let other people tell you what you care about. You get a pick. Gary Rich says the biggest problem the world faces is stupidity without common sense. I, I can tell you by the numbers that... that RJ Wheel says in the 60s and 70s it was population explosion and that we would run out of oil. How'd that work out? I, I can tell you, like, statistically, what is the, the thing that's causing the most issues? Sure, but that, that doesn't mean that other issues aren't important. We should, our society should put all of our effort into that. Now, let, let the people that are interested in that issue take the forefront of it and become experts on it. Of course, hopefully you get different types of people on there. Well, one of the issues with the environmental things is that the analytical people aren't involved in it. It's, right so that they can actually make good decisions Thirty-one fifty-eight is absorbing a little bit it certainly looks positive No, the tick seems a Sunday mixed. driver says they said that we were heading towards an ice age. Now it's global warming. The dire models are always wrong. 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 Internals actually. Internals actually don't look super great. I wouldn't say that the models are already always wrong. In fact, in terms of predicting the temperature change so far. DJ the, Spinglass says RJ, look at the population numbers, and we will run out of oil sooner or later. The, the actual scientific models in terms of like what the temperature is going to be have actually been really, really accurate. The problem is, is that people are always taking those models and saying it's things. Age first, global warming, second, climate change, third, we are at environmental justice now. What, what happens is... Gary Rich says while the earth warmed by two degrees in 50 years, well better grab your crying closet, four degrees in 100 years. Nah, they, they track it very, very well. 
But the problem is, is that uh, environmentalists will take the models and then start to say things that the model implies this and that, that the model doesn't actually say. Like they, they come in and say, well, because the earth is going to rise by four degrees, then that means that the ocean is going to rise by this much. And uh, it doesn't, it's nonsense. And then the people actually go in and do the math. And so, so that becomes the thing is, ah, we're all going to be underwater. Remember the Al Gore thing, right? But then somebody actually goes back and does the math and they make a model for that. And they find out that it'll rise by like a meter over the next hundred years, which really isn't a big deal. But then that never gets out because they don't want to care about that, right? Confirmation bias. The, the models for climate change are actually quite accurate so far. At some point, they're going to be wrong for sure. Because it's a model. It's a model. And, and ergo, if it, a model will always be wrong at some point. Um, but overall, the climate uh, change models in terms of temperature have actually been surprisingly precise. Sunday Driver says NYC was supposed to be underwater by now. DJ Spinglass says look how thin the atmosphere is we can't mess around. If we are wrong it is doomsday. Self-feeding warming cycle. Mm. We need to stabilize the average temp to be safe for the future generations. Uh, the, Gary the, Rich says four degrees in 100 years is nothing. It's bullshit. But people fall for anything. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Yeah. See, Gary, Gary has it right. So when you look at the models and what they say is going to be the average increase, it's not the end of the world. And this is what I'm saying is that the actual impact from climate change has, has been exaggerated. They've taken the science and they say that this is what the science is when that's not really what the science says. The science says something like, I don't know the exact numbers, but something like four degrees in a hundred years, which means that things will be a little bit harder. There'll be certain areas of the world that won't be as comfortable, but it's not the end of the world. People will change and move on and be fine. It's not anything that can't be adapted to. Uzi Knesset says, didn't some former environmental activists just recently come out saying as much? Well, I think, I think a lot of scientists have been coming out and saying as much because they're kind of a little bit sick of their, their results being extrapolated. But then you can't really come out and say that because then they won't fund your research. It's, it's, it's kind of a messed up thing, isn't it? Sunday driver says it's a giant communist plot. Black, pink, Lisa, S, A, Y, S, A, M, I still Japanese. You are. Sunday driver says off to a Zoom meeting. Gary Rich says to all the older people, remember when we had a giant hole in the ozone? What oh, happened yeah. to that hole? We had to ban products due to that hole. No, DJ it, Spinglass says it. how can you pump CO2 into the atmosphere that has been sequestered for millions of years and not have a significant impact? Common sense. Yeah. Where did all that CO2 come from in the beginning? Right. There was it was always there. Um, no, so so they banned certain products, and because those products weren't in the air anymore, the ozone layer healed itself and is not a problem anymore, apparently. And you gotta you gotta wonder, was it um really a huge deal to ban those products? Yeah, that looks Pretty bullish that last move right there. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I didn't read the, the news that came out. Economic optimism was 44 versus the previous 47, and Jolt's jobs openings was positive. Black, pink, Lisa, S -A -Y -S versus an estimated 4.85 million. So that that looks like a move up. Your hedge behind Tesla's mind-blowing rally, a flood of day trading Robin Hooders. Yeah, it's that that thing looks parabolic and won't last. I tell you what, when watching watching stocks, there's one thing that I've seen that is just a really good indicator is when everybody is talking about it, it's 
gone, it's played out. Look somewhere else. People will say, ah, this is where you want to short it. Well, you can try that, but that ends up being a difficult trade. You're better off just looking for better opportunities. Go and find a, the next Tesla. Treasury is still pretty Gary Rich says job openings post of let's see the run. It's um info. Speculator Seth Day Trading says, Info. Well, it does look like we should be long, but I don't I don't see a safe spot. The issue is you're going to get like the 69 area, and then there's the 80 area. I don't know. Blackpink Elias ACS, so taxi and trassif. There you go. Okay. Well, maybe that would have been a good spot. I don't know. Really can't say. Sure is clicking a lot. Gary Rich says erasing the red losses. Yeah. I guess they're not still not back to yesterday's open or yesterday's close, are we? Which which is thirty one seventy two and could be a little could be a tough area. I think for me, probably would be better. I mean, you probably got another 10 minutes here, but then we're in the counter trend period, right? So I'm looking that if I were to get in now, that it's actually going to kind of chill off. So I'm, I'm going to wait for that whole thing to play out first, and then maybe we can try and take a long. Blackpink Elias says, do you have a video explaining Forex vs Futures and to each is bit So I have a video which is titled, Why You Shouldn't Trade Forex. <laughs> um, but, but the gist of it is that when you trade Forex, you're trading against your broker. And uh, it puts you at a significant disadvantage. So I would not recommend trading Forex unless you have some already really significant edge like you have insight into the functioning of some government that normal people don't have. Otherwise, you're, you're just extremely unlikely to have any success in Forex. Man, Tesla's just insane. I wonder what does it take for a stock like that to lose its momentum?
because I just don't think that that move is sustainable. Uh, you don't want to go short it. Everybody shorting it is probably a big reason why it's a movie the way it is. Mm, okay, so uh, yeah, I can I can see you. I, I think I could actually outright go short the E-mini at the moment. I, I don't think that that is the trend for the overall day, so I don't think that it's really a very good, great trade, but I, I do think that um, maybe there's another push up, but that overall the book is, is telling me that the counter trend period is about to come in and that they're, they're going to sell and go sideways for a bit. Okay, well, the treasury is sold down here. I can see that the guys in the five year are buying as they tend to do on auction day, but that because the price has been moving down, they've just been able to get good prices and they're happy with that. Under Armour looking to sell my fitness pal app. Oh, well, that was a bad acquisition if that's the case. Hmm. Well, you know what? I think that it's probably a good time for me to go and take a break. <clears throat> and we'll see what, that when we come back. It looks like they're going to try and make another push. But I'm just saying that the one year book, the book looks like they're they're a little overdone now. Okay, gold spikes back above 1800 after Bostick's downbeat comments. Well, it looks like the Yemeni is just going to play through this again. Oh, and actually, they didn't. Uh, okay. We went through. Curious. So sometimes when, when you get up there like that, and it becomes too heavy and they, they have to pull back. 
by that time, they were able to push through with enough uh, force that it relieved the pressure. So, um, but this was like a perfect example of why I was saying, like, probably you don't want to short it because it doesn't appear to be the, the daily trend. Uh, in fact, I, I would say, you know, the, the fundamentals on the flow and everything looks really similar to yesterday. And yesterday I was saying that the, that the bear case just uh, doesn't look very strong. And I think that, you know, we got a little bit of two-way trade and now the bulls look like they're completely back in charge. But it's still a retracement, so I, I should be a little bit more hesitant to extrapolate too much from this move, right? Um, and I do, I do still want to see if there's a reaction during this 10-15 time period. Especially in the treasuries. Look at that uh, absorption. E Trader says any trade taken? Nah, I haven't taken one. You know, I, I really could have taken a long, but. My don't. Uh... So far, it just doesn't look like a super great opportunity. That's all. You see, gold is moving. Oh, it's gold moving, yeah. It went from 1785 to now 1806. So, maybe um, off of Bostick's uh, downbeat comments. They're buying the equities because they say, okay, now the, the stimulus fa faucet is going to stay on. That must be the group of traders that are taking it. But then you'd have to say that that whole thing from yesterday was just nonsense. <laughs> Rand Squawk tweets, Dear investors, we have abandoned our traditional investing framework to fully app allocate our capital to the Tesla slash wire card spread. Let it rip. Uh, good grief. Yield up 50% on no news in one week is a zero hedge tweet. Uh, that's so nuts. So I didn't think that Bostick's comments were that negative, but. Gold is moving. Okay, so there was a good, good absorption and uptick. Okay, so here's the counter trend period we are entering now. Well, I just need to be patient here. Sometimes it you know, it will lead to an outright reversal. Sometimes the, this period is just kind of a sideways sort of a thing. Sometimes they just completely ignore it. Uh, the the completely ignoring it thing has has only happened. I've only noticed a few times though. Oh, well, there's a new high actually. You can see on that new high, not immediately running up. They could they. I mean, obviously they can still tick, but but it didn't like flush. You know what I mean. So you can already see that the uh, uh, momentum has has kind of slowed a little bit. Oh, you know what? I forget. I left my water. Hold on. I'll be back.
block by. Oh, so he wants it at 01, does he? But you see that strong stack at 01 half. Okay, so interesting. All of this size, it was up at, oh, no, wait, I'm, I'm reading it wrong. Where is it? 010. So there was a 3K they pulled. Pulled a 3K in the 10 years. They pulled a 3K, they traded it down, and now there's this big old honking huge thing here at a one half. So Agar says he's short. I'm wondering, I, I kind of got myself prepared for if this is a flip. Seems like he got big guys on both sides of this though. gold I keep looking over at that gold chart and i'm like whoa man it really everything really took off the thing that's crazy is how fast it was ECB's Casa European banks need TARP style buying solution to weather the virus crisis. Policy options needed to prevent corporate liquidity crisis from becoming insolvency crisis. Okay, the liquidity in the 10 year has died down. They're no longer adding, they no longer have 4Ks on it. Today at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, FBI Director Ray will deliver remarks on the media on China. Oh, boy. That. Well, a decent amount is traded through here at 01 in the 10 year.
Moon says, are you trading sim or live? Uh, we're trading sim right now in the summer. Um, there's not as much opportunity in the summer, so I, I have done poorly past few years on in summer, so I'm just doing sim in summer. But I, I don't know, man. I don't. I mean, I have that order up there, uh, oh one half, but I don't know if that's ever gonna trigger. Gary Rich says it's better COVID and Novavax vaccine gov awarded 1.6 bill to them. Who said one can't make money from the gov? Yeah. Mm, I'm stacking it on one, too. I don't know. This this move in the treasuries here is Gary Rich says. Suspicious. Yep, I guess futures trading ISNT is fun as equities and options. <laughs> well, I mean that's where the equities and options will screw you up, though, right? It's all that chasing for the hot thing. Okay. okay. Options port. Well, that's new. Oh, are we. Gary Rich says yes if you're stupid and dumb. But hey, people are stupid and dumb in futures. It's just pure Darwin, only the strong will survive. I do need the weak to come in. Yeah, all right. I see. Okay, my data is just catching up here. Oh, what the hell is going on here? Bot says micro GC had full time frame continuity on the 1005 ET bar. Yeah. They went up. I think, um, I don't think this is my internet because when I it just died on me there. Um, it was my little connection to the router, my little browser thing wasn't working either. So wonder if there's something wrong with. Bot my... says he is still looking for a strong enough pullback to form an initial pivot high. I wonder if where my ethernet. Well, we'll just hold it here and see what happens. Man, I am so sorry. I'm just trend period now my at internet ET. is in and out. My internet is in and out. It's not my internet. It's because when it goes, I'm not Speculator connected Seth to my router. Trading says having network problems. When it when it happens, I'm not even connected to my uh, router. I'm wondering if I have a wire going out or something. Problem with my network card. But it's like nothing changed. 
Why would it just all of a sudden start falling apart? Yeah. So this coronavirus cases rise 3.6% versus seven day average of 5%. So once again, any Kenny of the Desmond cases says FOMO is real and it just fucked me up. Bot says it's the black helicopters from the Democratic Party coming after you for your Biden bashing. Oh, no. I went, I went and jiggled the Ethernet cable, and that seemed to, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it goes out again. And it wasn't that. Look at this. Something's up. Block by. Yeah, I thought so. Didn't get filled though. Got an OKQ okay position. Look, the way that the, the, the book just like completely flipped there. Now all of a sudden it's the vids that are strong. Bot says fourth test of 178.03 in the ZB holding for now. Well, before I had it there, so I think that I should execute there and hold out and see if I get filled on the one. Kenny Desmet says you know that feeling when you are inside a limbo and you don't know what to do because you're already fucked, tongue out. Oh, that's the worst. Something's happening. Not seeing anything from this press conference that we're supposed to be having right now yet. Bot says 178.15 was the month open, July, for ZB, they couldn't get through it on their last ATM this morning. Gary Rich says these are a range trader's paradise. Hmm. Yeah, well, I probably could have scalped one tickers out of this in the tenure, couldn't we? But something's happening in the E-mini. So we were waiting for the counter trend period to see maybe a bit of a you know, pull back and then we could take it, continue it along. But now all of a sudden it seems to be completely falling apart and the treasuries are very strongly bid. Millennia Trump confident plans tell all book. Oh boy. Gary Rich says one tick is for amateurs. Why bother waking up for one tick? I don't know if that's what you can get. Bot says ES broke lower on the flip at 10.30 hour start. Yeah. Does that put us on... Uh, what does it do over here? It does. It puts us all red. No chance of us going red on the week, though. That would be a really... Well, actually... Let me double check that. 24? Uh, actually, it's possible. It's Gary Rich says, yeah, one tick hard. makes sense if one is trading 1,000 lots on the spoos. Well, one tick on the spoos, it would certainly not. 
to me. But in the treasury, hey, if that's your strategy. Gary Rich says China has to lead the world markets out of it. As bad as that sounds, it's just the way it is. You think so? Well, we are kind of in an issue where if things took a dip, then that would be really bad for China and ultimately devastating for the rest of us, for sure. Well, if the e-mini really does end up moving down, that could be really devastating to them because a lot of, for one thing, a lot of people bought into that move. It was a really encouraging move. And then second of all, we're unable to even get to yesterday's close slash this session's open. We've come way short of it. That would be really devastating psychologically, I think. And the movement in correlation with the treasuries is really interesting, to say the least. Bot says way short of the Globex open two ticks. Yeah. Well, really, the, the Globex previous session close was 31.72 on my chart. So two, two handles short of that. And I'm just saying, normally when you're looking at a spot like that to see, you know, does it hold or whatever, they almost always touch it and go through a little bit and then and then maybe it turns around <clears throat> We take the effects of our monetary policy on pension funds and savings very seriously, says ECB executive board member Isabel Schnabel to the Dutch newspaper NRC. Has I can't read all these Dutch words. But interest rates are mainly driven by long-term economic and societal trends, not by central banks. Mm, I don't think so.
Oh, what's that? That was a real slip. They're holding it now. Coming to the end of the counter trend period. Gary Rich says, Seth, you might want to re-list into Peter Davies' drills on order flow. Why is that? Gary Rich says, wait, you never listen to his drills on reading and understanding order flow. No, I want to come in. Well, it's been a long time. I mean, I think I have the edge and have had the edge on this for a long time, and I'm pretty happy with that, how it happened, even though ultimately we don't know if it's going to move from here or not. But the way that I entered into it was perfectly fine. Gary Rich says, well, rewatch them over and over till it gets burned into your memory. I guess there's some things that I could have done to have gotten filled at all one instead of the way that I did it. Frankly, I kind of, I mean... The way that that played out and everything, you know, I kind of anticipated it. So I, I probably could have been more aggressive on the play, hit into a one, or even tried to get filled on the limit at 05, or zero zero half half rather. Um, but I played it safe. But even with just playing it safe, I've caught the edge on this for a while. I don't know if it's going to hold or not. I don't think that I've gotten an uptick yet. But okay, so here is ten or ten forty five. They sell it further on the next bar. That's funny. They literally waited for that bar to close and then sold it. Okay, so now I've gotten it to. Gary Rich says one thing on his chart, he has two cumulative deltas displaying not one. On his chart? Maybe it's a newer video that I've seen. I have a bunch of, I mean, when you look over at my, my tenure chart is very, very different, right? I very much, I very much like the way that this is shown today because look, here, right here, on the down tick, there was a significant pull. Um, but when that happened, look, ultimately they were buying contracts down in here just for a little bit. And then here again, like here's a pull. But ultimately, look, the book went more bid. So they were using these large orders to try. Gary Rich and says on his jigsaw charts. Trying to kind of confuse. You can see there. And then ultimately we went higher. Is that pretty? Worked pretty good today. 
I've been wondering, I've been doubting the efficacy of these, but now I can see that this is just a way better way, at least in the tenure, I think, to really show you what what was happening. I like it. Mm -mm. He's playing two cumulative deltas, not one. I have... No, you can't do that. There's just the cumulative delta, and then there's the histograms for the Vista chart. By the way, look at this stack right here in the E mini. That was right around 1027. What was happening on that one? Mm, interesting. That was a doji. Very curious. Gary Rich says it goes bid but wait for the pull not the initial, it's part of his drills. Almost half of nearly 5,000 active U.S. FBI counterintelligence cases underway are related to China, says FBI Director Ray. Wow. That's, that's a lot. The market here can guarantee we did not receive any PPP money. Yeah, I didn't receive any PPP money either, guys. <laughs> oh. Okay, so they're coming in the e mini into a little pool of liquidity, and they're looking a little skittish on it. I don't think that that's ever going to happen. Okay. Some more possible reaction to Director Ray's comments there. So a pretty big up candle. Hmm. Okay, curious. So there's a big there's a big order there at O three, but they absorbed a decent amount of contracts at 02 half. They reloaded at 02 half in the end. And the five year is chewing into that 21 half. Oh, but the e mini really did turn. FBI's Ray accuses China of massive theft of US data. Why are they buying? That's what the headline is. There's, there's got to be something else. Maybe they just think, oh, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as we thought. He wasn't as hawkish as we thought. Because, look, they're already back up to six and a half. That might be all that's available in that one. Yeah, look at that, yeah. Damn it.
Gary Rich says now watch it's gonna fail. They will yeah. raid up there and flip it. Yep, yeah. okay, cool. We got that. So I didn't actually see I mean volume came in there. I didn't actually see many see oh, it's kinda weird. Kind of weird. I think that the trade played out though. The, the trade, the trade was that there was going to be some concern going into that event, and I think that there was. And I think that then the event ended up being kind of nothing, and that's probably why the Gary Rich index says, "Watch out, recovering. suckers." That's probably why the E mini is recovering here. Now, can I just fight? Flipping around and taking a long in the E-mini here. Um, Gary Rich says, see it's turning. The pull came dragging up and watch it will raid up and fake out and gravitate towards. And what you're saying isn't really detailed enough. I don't think that people understand what you're saying. When you look at the, when you look at the tenure, that looks like it was just a trace retrace of the range huh? oh two balls would have been so much better if I had caught a one, huh? Gary Rich says I gave you those four chart examples with price examples to have you study those patterns. What's happening in the tenure doesn't qualify as that. Well, hmm. Gary Rich says it's on every chart that you know what to look for. Maybe if you're talking about that they bought it, I don't know. All I know is that I caught the trade that I wanted to catch in the 10 year and that's all that there was in it. Well, the buy side liquidity looks pretty strong there.
Really should have been in at thirty one sixty six. Like I, I think they they're gonna do this, but I'm just looking at where I ended up getting in at wasn't necessarily the most amazing spot, was it? <clears throat> President Trump on mm Gary Rich says on that one range chart, the V bottom is the raid, the liquidity is the past one, two attempts, then it reversed upward. Broke the liquidity area. Hmm. I don't know if, uh, yeah. There was some liquidity at 3162. You're right. There was some liquidity right here. We busted through it and then reversed. You can see here on this one, there's not really significant liquidity up here at 3168, but they they seem to be kind of sputtering out anyways. So this could be consolidation and higher, I don't know. Okay, that's interesting. Bunch of fiddling around in that area. Some asks are pulling. Gary Rich says if it can't get past the previous highs, it's a trap and a raid will show and proceed downward. Mm. 
looks pretty random to me. He's doing something, but I can't tell what. There's a lot of clicking around. Some stacking on the bid now. Gary Rich says it wants to pull down. If it keeps bumping up and fails, it's likely to drop. Rinse repeat rinse repeat. Gary Rich says it's how you read price action on price charts. When study hundreds and thousands of charts over years you see these patterns. Well, if you think you see a pattern, then you see a pattern, but it looks like a bunch of noise to me, and I'm not basing my decisions on any of that. So we do appear to be running into some liquidity in the 3168 area, even though it's not really showing up very strongly. There's definitely been some distribution there. And when I come in and I look at my footprint, uh, it's not enough to stop it. I do still think that they're going to go higher, but there was some distribution there. It's about 7,000, 8,000. Probably need double that to, to really be like, uh, oh, you know, they can't push through that. Nine oh six now. Well, sure does seem like it's been floating here for a long time. Honestly, though, the movement that we're seeing at the moment looks like it's mostly fiddling in the book. Like all of those upticks and downticks, there's a lot of clicking, if you can hear that.
We can see they're trading like 400, 500 up in this area in those prices now. Nice little run. Feeling sleepy now. Gotten all quiet and things are getting a little fuzzy and it was just a little, a little too boring there. Now it's changing a lot. Tenzin Norbu says Apocalypse Never by Michael Schellenberger is a new book rejecting climate alarmism. He was in the business of climate scare until recently. Oh, that was the book that you were talking about. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I agree. Uh, liberals tend to be right about, like, science says certain things like that uh, climate does appear to be increasing. But they, they the way they extrapolate it, I think, is just, it's ridiculous and the policies that they propose in particular i mean that's the thing that i really have a problem with is, is what they propose we do about it is just insane oh she's trying come on one more one more nope close ah yes now high. Yes. Some stops, please. Yes, that's a stop run. Very nice. Ah, you got much more in you. Go, go, go. And the treasury is pushing them down too. Sunday driver says I'd like to blow up Zoom. Zoom can go straight to hell. Fire, fire, fire. Are the Zoom still doing well? I thought the Zoom collapsed. I don't. Yeah, I didn't thought.
Yeah, 3181 looks reasonable. So I think I can hold on here. This may have to be one that we wait after the hold until held after the stream. So it looks like they did kind of create a little bit of a liquidity vacuum. They have to come back and turn. Plus, so now we're positive on all time frames. So. Gary Rich says Zoom 261 a share hasn't fallen yet, part of the new normal of the economy. Mm. Sunday remember... driver says I wish WooFlu would end. I have more meetings with people I hate than ever before. In the office, I know how to avoid them. Working from home, they always find me via Zoom. Mm. It must have been a speed bump because there was a point where there was, you know, they were talking about the security vulnerabilities and issues with China and stuff and they took a hit. And I think a lot of people kind of assumed that Zoom was done. I know that my company moved off of Zoom and moved over to Microsoft Teams. So, which I'm having a ton of problems with, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, so I kind of, I, I thought that Zoom was over. But you say that it's still going, huh? Well, either way, I'm not so sure that that's where I would want. Zoom was where I would want my money. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm way more interested in, um, the, you know, if I, I'm talking about like technology that I think is really good for like remote working and everything is Citrix, man. Ah, they got good shit. Sunday driver says Zoom had a problem with people Zoom bombing. They join meetings they weren't invited to and call everyone an N word. Oh. Really? That was a thing? Man. You just like randomly guess. A hash. Okay. It's just I can feel like my eyes that want to go like. Sunday driver says not sure how they did it, but it was easy for hackers to do. Yeah, Gary Rich says, well, I guess you don't think about the future. Hey, when TikTok goes public, bet the farm or the rabbit. LMAO. Okay, so they seem to be uh, doing a, a little bit more distribution here in the 71 area, but it's a different kind. It's a much more choppy area than what we had before. What we had before was so constrained. Okay. 
why am I having such a problem today? I need to make a video about this VIX thing because people ask me about it like almost every day that I mention it. Okay, so a little bit of stops higher. Go, go, go. See, I should be getting excited. Sunday driver says anyone want to help me move? You know what? Let's just let this ride a bit. I, I should take a walk or something. I'm just feeling like I'll, I'll pass out. I just feel sleepy. Ten minutes before we got to close. So. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Let's make sure we got our uh, comments on here. Oh, you know what? I haven't been seeing you guys' comments because it's not connected. I'm sorry, guys. Probably sound like such an asshole. Anyone want to help me move? Where are you moving to, dude? You're moving to Utah, then I'll come out. Okay, so we're at yesterday's high, 31, 
fifty that I did not touch. I my volatility target suggests that we can get up into the eighty one area. Um, I don't think that that previous day's high is going to hold, but we've had a good move up. I do see the tick kind of you know turning a little bit there so this could be a potential turning spot and well, i don't see anything too crazy on the volume still though so i think we just kind of play it by ear we should definitely move this up move to Coeur d'Alene Idaho Idaho well i'm not driving all the way to Idaho sorry <laughs> <laughs> well come visit though we can come visit maybe when you know when when it's socially acceptable again <laughs> i don't know if i trust you you're probably already infected that's a beautiful place i i think i've been there before not, let me go look. What's what highways are over there? That's a pretty good little up move there. Nobody's traded into the previous day's high though. Okay. There it is. Oh, it's so small. Oh no, wait, not that's Coeur d'Alene. Oh, it is up in Idaho. I've never been there. I, yeah, I've never been there. You always go up through Montana like Great Falls. So I've never taken that detour over to Washington. It's actually a pretty far drive now that I'm now that I'm looking at it. No, nope. probably probably you gonna have to come down here. <laughs> Jer Bolisarnio is sick with coronavirus. Who's that? Is that uh, the uh, an ECB guy? Brazil president. Ah, oh, that's the Brazil president. Gotcha. He is taking hydrochloroquine and athro azithromycin. Well, since it's uh, getting close, seeing a little bit of something, something here. Oh, come on. Come on, that's not too positive. Come on. Okay. World Health Organization Chief Tedros says outbreak is accelerating and we have clearly not reached the peak of the pandemic. Uh, CNN's Don Lemon claims black on black. Well, that's not, that's not, I'm not going to get into that one. That's not a headline you guys care about. Not pertinent to markets, that is. We do care about all, all lives. And, and in particular, the ones that are at risk, sure. And including... Black on black crime. It's, it's an issue. We should talk about it. I mean, we as a society, I don't know. We really need to talk about it right now. We've already yapped way too much today about that sort of stuff, don't you think? Latin America is seeing a rise due to late cycle infections. Ooh, active shooter at Marine Base in California. Hmm. Well, I don't know if any of that stuff was, um, yeah, I don't know.
Why am I so sleepy? I hope I'm not putting you guys to sleep. I can't watch that stream anymore. It just makes me so tired. Oh, man. We lost a lot of viewers when we had all of those uh, um, connection problems an hour ago. I'm sorry. World Health Organization officials hold a briefing on the coronavirus pandemic. Trying to sound all dramatic, is it working? Whichever way it breaks, you know, the other side is going to be scrambling. Buns iceberg at 90 sold at Merkel. Pending buns look already for an ugly move. Given that we're getting some treasury supply today, they could. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Hey, it's got a blue, blue, uh, blue candle there. But it's time for me to go. Well, I I want to sit and watch, but no, nah, it's it's fine. We're good. Um. Uh, yeah, what do we got on the docket tomorrow? Today was okay. Actually, some pretty, some pretty good. Um, some, I, I think the trades today were okay. I obviously could have done a little bit better, but. Uh, oh yeah, I was looking for tomorrow. What do we got? We got ten-year bond auction and consumer credits. Yeah, it's actually, you know, for the first week of the month, it's actually relatively light on numbers until Friday when we get the PPI. So, anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow. And in the meantime, stay profitable, friends. Oh, that's an ugly little down move. Well, you know what? Have fun with that, guys. Have fun with that.